Welcome back to Tom Talks. Um, it's a beautiful day outside. With me today, I've got Jeremy Taylor, who runs the Data Analytics, Business Intelligence, and Data Science practice at Tom Executive. And uh, welcome, Jeremy. Thank you very much. For those of you um, who don't know Jeremy, and Jeremy, for those of you who don't know yourself, mm -hmm. would you mind just giving us a bit of uh, background? How long you've been at Tom, mm -hmm. a bit about your uh, recruitment career, and specifically the desk that you lead here for us? Sure, so um, I've been working in recruitment for 14 years now, uh, mainly within the financial services space. So I've spent my first five years working in London, uh, recruiting mainly within the operations world. And then I came to uh, Australia in 2008, I think it was. Uh, worked for Michael Page for a couple of years, uh, led one of their finance contract desks, um, sorry, finance perm desks. Um, and then after that, I came to Tom, and I've been here at Tom for about seven and a half years now. Uh, joined originally to lead our contract finance business um, from a desk point of view, um, and then I set up our data analytics and BI team within the group uh, roughly two years ago. Terrific. Thanks, Jeremy. Um, you've been heavily involved in uh, BI, data analytics, data science. Mm -hmm. um, over the past sort of 12 to 18 months, where has the demand from the skill set come? And what is the reason for that demand? Um, I guess one of the key areas which is still in hot demand is essentially the BI development space. So within that, we would say anything from a data warehousing point of view, um, all the way through to dashboard um, visualization development. So within the likes of Tableau, ClickView, all the new age visualization tools. Um, essentially, that's being driven by uh, the banks looking to build out their data assets and trying to get more structure and organization around their data warehouses. Because uh, essentially, um, you know, if they can ensure that the data they have is, is the right data, it's the clean data, and it's the data they can leverage, then it's going to drive reporting and insights across the group. So, you know, whether you're working in you know, Microsoft SQL Server, Teradata, you know, any of these um, sort of key relational databases, developers within that space are still in hot demand. Thanks for that, Jeremy. Um, when we actually have a closer look at financial services as a sector, um, and there are subsectors within that, where do you see um, the take up of BI, data analytics, data science? Where's the heavy investment in those subsectors taking or most prevalent these days? Sure. Uh, retail banking, without a doubt. Um, I guess you know, retail banking, you know, inherently has a lot of customers. So there's a lot of data in there um, that can be leveraged to better understand what your customer looks like and try and understand what they actually need from a product point of view. So, you know, whether it's data warehousing, BI from an insights and descriptive analytics point of view, all the way through to advanced um, predictive analytics, um, you know, there's heavy investment because they've got the data and they can use that data and those tools and those capabilities to understand the client better and drive the business forward. Um, uh, we're also seeing within the insurance sector, so obviously part of the wealth management, uh, but there is an investment within um, you know, big data technology and analytics. You know, analytics uh, within the insurance sector isn't necessarily new. Um, you know, the actuarial capability within those businesses will always be heavily analytically focused. Um, in terms of data science and the predictive piece, particularly tackling the claims area of ins insurance at the moment, which has always been um, an area of scrutiny, essentially, uh, we're seeing this heavy investment there. So big data capability, bringing in advanced machine learning sort of data scientists into those teams to try and get an understanding of claims um, and how they can better price the business and predict spikes in claims, which essentially costs that industry money. Correct, okay. Then just touching on trends in tools or applications or data warehouses, where across that sort of, let's call it the data stack, mm -hmm. um, where are you seeing trends or what's the, what, what are the more popular um, uh, databases or BI tools mm -hmm. or languages that are involved in, uh, in the sector? Um, I would again say from a warehousing point of view, Teradata and SQL, you know, without a doubt, um, you know, that's where we see a large amount of demand from a contractor base. Um, so you know, without a doubt, you know, from a tool point of view, that's where we're seeing the skill set lies. Um, you know, broadly speaking, visualization, it's ClickView, it's Tableau, it's Power BI. That's again where we're seeing the most amount of demand. Again, with ClickView and Tableau probably leading the charge, as it were. Um, and that's just not within financial services, that's broadly speaking across the commerce space as well. Um, the minute you kind of move into uh, you know, the world of data science um, on the more advanced analytics end of the spectrum, um, you know, we're definitely seeing that you know, the big data technologies, Hadoop, 
Python and R, uh, from an open source point of view, is the go-to tools. Um, and we're seeing that a lot of the, um, I guess, academics that we're seeing coming out of the universities, those are the tools that they use the most because they're free and they can use them in their, in their research and their studies. Um, but then, you know, you know, within sort of product and customer analytics, um, you know, SaaS will always be a go-to tool and is heavily entrenched across uh, financial services, um, you know, not just banking, but obviously within the insurance sector as well. But you still need to have strong SQL skills um, to get your hands at the data, um, wrangle that data, leverage it, get it into the right kind of data sets, and then use it for reporting and insights. So I guess SQL will under, underscore all of that. In a couple of meetings that we've been together, uh, often the conversation um, centres around, you know, a data science or analytics team um, maybe overdoing the analytics or the insights or what they can bring to bear with regards to their skills mm -hmm. and forgetting the um, commercial reality, the commercial application of, of, of why their job exists and what they're setting out to achieve. Notwithstanding that though, would you mind giving me an idea of where you think the whole data science side of things or the analytics side of things, what skills do you think they need to really focus on to you know, have a demonstration of success or impact in the roles in which they find themselves in? Sure, there's a few things. Um, I would probably say um, if we're talking about the more advanced uh, analytics, data science end of the spectrum, uh, machine learning skills are paramount. You definitely need to um, develop that skill set and there's a couple of ways you can do that. Um, you can either obviously get the opportunity within your own organization to progress into their data science team and be trained by somebody within that business who you know, has a strength in that space, which is great. Um, and I would always say men being mentored and learning from the right person is, is very important. Um, if you're coming through the academic route, you do tend to find that, um, you know, whether it be from a master's in data science or, you know, PhD grads in physics and bioinformatics and the like, uh, they use machine, machine learning skills to do a lot of their research. So they tend to find that they're actually coming off the back of those uh, studies, having skills that can actually apply within a, a banking environment or anywhere else within financial services. I guess the, uh, the key thing there is actually the application within a commercial environment because more often than not, that's not something they've done before. It's mainly for research. So I'd encourage anyone looking to step into data science to actually make sure that they are experimenting in their own time. So uh, there's a number of ways you can do that. Um, so there's the Kaggle competitions that you can, that you can enter um, to uh, test out your machine learning modeling skills. There's also um, you know, things you can do in your own free time in terms of building your own uh, machine learning algorithms and tools using open source tools such as R, for example, um, to apply it to something you have interest in. So it could be a footy tipping competition or anything else out there uh, where you can actually get access on the data um, and use that to predict out what the results would be. So if you can take that um, academic skill set and apply it within the real, real world environments, you tend to find that when it comes to interviews and looking for that job, uh, people can relate to it more. Um, and you're probably more likely to secure the role. Um, so that's, that's uh, I guess, one of the key areas. Um, communication skills are absolutely essential these days. So going to your, back to your point earlier with regards to um, teams who are um, you're doing some really interesting work and uh, you know, very advanced um, you know, modeling and analytics and all the rest of it, um, you still need to be able to communicate with the business and understand what their key problems are because if you're not actually answering the business problem um, and building a solution for them then you're not really showing any tangible value or return on investment with regards to the data science analytics capability. So communication in terms of engaging with the business is, is hugely important. Um, I would also say that um, you also need to look at, and going back to my point around mentoring, um, the leader of the team is very important as well. So they need to have a good business understanding and, and uh, I guess appreciate the value of what the team can do for the group um, because then that will build the profile, uh, you'll get more interesting work and again it come back, comes back to learning and being led correctly within the group. Okay, true. I, I, I couldn't agree with you more. A lot of the skill sets that we cover here at Tom, that communication piece is absolutely vital. Mm -hmm. um, just a little bit more advice. If I was a, a data analytics candidate mm -hmm. uh, right now, mm -hmm. what advice would you give me uh, in either my job search or trying to progress in my current career, my current employer? Mm -hmm. uh, again, you know, think about the skills that we've just mentioned. So developing them, machine learning and communication. Um, 
when you're looking at identifying uh, the right kind of organization for you, obviously there's the usual cultural um, things you need to look for. Um, I would definitely encourage you to look for a business who's being creative. Um, that creativity with regards to, again, how data science and analytics can be used for the better good from a commercial point of view of the business is very important. Uh, so you want to get a sense that the team and that capability within the organization is respected but sponsored at the highest level within the group because you'll find then that you'll be able to work on some really interesting projects and answer some really um, sort of challenging business problems. Um, the leadership piece of the team again is, is very important as well um, and just get up to speed with all the technology which is relevant, i.e. the toolkit for a data scientist. Um, again talking about the things we mentioned earlier, you know, open source tools are Python, etc. Um, you make sure that you know which tools um, you need to answer the problem, as it were, um, and you know, leave from there. I would say they're the most important things. Okay, Jeremy. Last question: um, the whole data analytics, BI, insights side of thing has been certainly on trend for the last two years. You've been heavily involved in it. Um, those um, trends that you've noticed in the t last 12 to 18 months, do you expect that to continue into the future or do you see something different for that landscape? Within BI? And data science. Sure. Um, within BI, one of the things I have noticed, um, probably in the last six months actually, and I think it's going to be a, a reoccurring theme, um, you know, business intelligence has always been more uh, descriptive, I guess I would say, with regards to you know the insights that they provide. Um, there is definitely a push for actually uh, putting some sort of predictive capability into those teams now as well. So rather than you know the reporting and insights and dashboarding and drilling down and slicing and dicing the data, there's now a push to okay, how can we predict out what's going to happen within this business unit? So similar with regards to sort of data science and analytics, looks at that predictive piece. There are BI tools out there now which are starting to, um, I guess, embed that predictive analytics capability within the tool. Um, the next step then is, okay, if you're going to change the capability of the tool um, and what the business can potentially receive from you, you now need to think about the staff. So do you have the individuals in the team who understand that predictive capability and how to get the best out of it? Because the tool is one thing, but you still need the right person actually using it. So. Um, I guess historically in those BI teams, computer science, you know, IT backgrounds and education have been prevalent. I think there's going to be now a bit of a move in those teams to see more stats, maths, actuarial skill sets um, to essentially, you know, develop the capability of those teams and move them in a direction that I guess historically they haven't actually played in so much. Okay, terrific. Jeremy, I have worked with you for seven years. I never tire of your enthusiasm and passion for uh, the work that you do and what you're interested in. So thanks so much for giving us all an insight. You're welcome. Thanks of you, uh, those of you who have tuned in again to one of Tom Talks. Um, thanks to Jeremy, and we'll see you again next time.